Well, his dad, who coaches him down in West Sus Sussex, will be particularly delighted there. So he's a young British prospect. Indeed, he's in the last eight of the junior tournament. Now, we'll be going to centre court in a moment or two for the third of the quarterfinals, Kafelnikov against uh, Goran Ivanisevic, seeded six and four respectively in a moment. Let me just update uh, a couple of other results in uh, ladies' doubles. Gigi Fernandez and Zevreva are the defending champions. Uh, they've won the first set against Conchita Martinez, the singles champion, and Tarabini, and they're 4-1 up in the second, so they're going very well. And elsewhere out on court uh, 14, Novotna and Arantxa Sanchez, last year's finalists, are ahead against Arndt and Shriver with a break um, in that first set. Right, we're off to centre court once again now. Andre Agassi has won there already in straight sets against Jaco Elting. Pete Sampras is at this moment playing Shuzo Matsuoka on uh, court number one and on BBC two at this moment. Here, we're going to centre court again for Kafelnikov against Ivanisevic. This could be a tight one, they say. Paul Hutchins and Julian Tutt. Yes, and I think the centre court crowd is rather hoping it might be after that tremendous display of returning from Agassi. Here we have perhaps the biggest server in the world, certainly on a grass court, the most effective. Against a man who can serve pretty well himself, but really the big question is whether he can, how well he can return even Yezovic's serves. Evgeny Kafelnikov, the Russian, just 21, making only his second appearance in these championships, an inch shorter than his opponent at six foot three. Currently ranked seven in the world, has been as high as four a couple of months ago. And has already won five times in his relatively short career. He did well getting to the third round last year when seeded 15 in his very first appearance here. This is only his eighth Grand Slam tournament. And since Wimbledon last year, he's gone one round better in each Grand Slam tournament reaching the fourth round in the US Open last year, then the quarter-final of the Australian this year before losing to Andre Agassi, and then, of course, the semi-final of the French Open before losing to the eventual champion, Thomas Muster. So, if that's to keep going, he's the champion this year. This man will have other thoughts. From originally split in Croatia, still has a home there, and in Monte Carlo. The last left-hander in the championship looking to become the first man since John McEnroe back in 1984 to win the title playing left-handed. He also has a highest ranking of four from a couple of months ago. The only Croatian in the men's draw. And making his eighth appearance in these championships since losing in the first round back in 1988 as a qualifier. Twice a runner-up to... Andre Agassi in 1992, that dramatic five-set final when he had an extraordinary run. He beat the likes of Woodford, Rosse, Lendl, Edberg and Sampras on the way to that final. And then last year, of course, losing 7-6, 7-6, love to Pete Sampras in the final. They've met five times and even years of it's only is just ahead. Kafelnikov won the first time they played on clay last year in Hamburg. And again, earlier this year, curiously, in Milan, indoors on a carpet. And you would have expected that the climatic conditions indoors would have favoured Ivan Yuzovic with his very powerful serve. Never met on grass. Calling time is Wayne McEwen from New South Wales. That's a pretty international occasion. So prepare to move your head quickly. First set, Kafelnikov to serve.
15 love. He's only served 33 aces in the championship so far, compared with his opponent's 104. Thirty love. Forty love. Game, Kapel Nakal, first game. Well, that's a pretty impressive opening game for Yevgeny Kafelnikov. Clearly wound up, hasn't been stretched so far. I've seen a number of his matches, Julian, and I've been more and more impressed every match he's played. And you know, I've spoken to a number of players this morning in the dressing room and out and about, and there's a, an air of expectation here that this young man could pull this match off. People talk of uh, Kapelnikov as a future Wimbledon champion, a future Grand Slam winner. We all know that Goran's got a great record here, and we all know that he's going to serve, what, 30, 40 aces uh, in this match if it goes to four or five sets. But Kafelnikov, who is time. really taking his time at the moment, has got the type of talent and temperament that could upset Goran Ivanisevic today. And I think it could become an Goran intriguing match. Goran Ivanisevic to serve. So an ace on the second serve, just to set the tone. That's love. Kafelnikov really had two options. One was the shot he played, or the other one was the lob. But uh, Goran anticipated exactly where he was going to go. No trouble at all. 40 love. Fifteen. Oh! Forty thirty. I was about to say that you don't mind serving double faults when you serve as many aces as he does, but three double faults in a row is a bit excessive. That's up. Ivanisevich. Kafelnikov had read that correctly, but he still couldn't get it in the middle of the racket or anywhere near. Game, Ivanisevich. <laughs> One game on. 1992, when Ivanisevich was runner-up, he served a record 206 aces.
15 there. Dirty love. Forty love. Forty fifteen. When Kafelnikov lost to Mooster in the French Open, there was a suggestion afterwards he didn't really believe that he could win. He suddenly looks as though he can believes that he can win this one. Game Kafelnikov. <laughs> Kafelnikov leads two games to one for sets. Well, I mentioned uh, Kafelnikov's very good record, improving record in Grand Slams. The opposite is true with Ivan Yuzovic, since losing in the final here last year. He's lost in the first round of every Grand Slam tournament since then. The big difference, though, Julian, is this is grass. And uh, he loves the grass because his serve is so strong. And also being left-handed is also a terrific advantage. And if you see there, He's uh, played very well. He's only lost one set. And his uh, opponent hasn't even lost one set. The Todd Martin match was a very good one. Both huge, huge servers. But in that match, I was very impressed with the way Goran returned serve. And I think the return of serve is going to be really the crux to this match this afternoon. Time. Goran, very popular with the uh, young element of the crowd and also the youngsters that watch on television. Never quite know what he's going to do. As you can see last game, he served three double faults in a row. Not many people do that. 15, love. And he's just as likely to serve three aces in a row as well. We're going to see a lot of Kofelnikov's backhand. Within the game of tennis at this level, it's one of the best. Two games on. Well, he did get three in a row there and four in the game. I hope he's come with a full supply of ammunition the rate he's using it up. Fifteen off. Dirty love.
40 love. Game, confirm the crowd. Kafelnikov leads three games to two, first set. Paul Hutchins has already been drooling about the <laughs> quality and talent of this young Russian. I have every reason to, I think, Julian. I've seen him quite some years. He's uh, been over a number of years as a very good junior, uh, particularly with Andrei Medvedev. I don't know, I, one drools easily over him because, I mean, all these guys are talented. It's a, it's a, a misused word in a way. What do I mean by talent? He, he's the sort of person that I think has got flair within his game, as well as what I would call stability within his game. Often people with a lot of flair, if you go back to Ilya Nastasi and, and other people, they don't lack the they lack the stability on the on the ground strokes and the volley. But this guy, I think, is very stable at the net, very strong serve and very good ground strokes, particularly his backhand. Time. One looks at players and one obviously uh, likes to pick out one particular shot, and I would pick out his backhand as being the one shot on the ground strokes that really sets him apart from most other players. I just think that we're looking at a guy who, I don't know whether he's going to do well here today, but eventually he's a finalist or winner here. Lock 15. Fifteen all. Thirty fifteen. And one of the spectators just called out, uh, more rallies, please. <laughs> well. Game, Ivanisevic. Three games all. Well, he only managed one ace in that game. Some pretty hefty first serving to go with it. Oh. Fifteen off. First serve. The hand of apology went up from the Croatian. He knew he was a bit lucky there with the net cord. <laughs> Nothing lucky about that, though. 15, 13.
Felnikov not really covering 15, properly 14. this one here. Didn't go over. There was only one way that Ivanisevic could hit that ball, which was down the line. And Felnikov just a little slow in covering it. Thirty fourteen. Juice. Advantage, Kapelnikov. Game for Kolnikov, new balls. Now it looks as though the winner of this match will be playing Pete Sampras. Now it looks as though the winner of this match will be playing Pete Sampras because on uh, court number one right now he's two sets to one and three love and serving against Matsuoka who had a great start by uh, winning the first set on the tie break. But uh, Sampras looks as though he's going through. That's on BBC Two that match at the moment. One result for you in the uh, ladies' doubles, the defending champions, champions for the last couple of years. In fact, Gigi Fernandez and Natasha Zevreva, uh, seeded one uh, again, have beaten Conchita Martinez, the singles champion, and uh, Miss Tarabini of Argentina, 6 2 6 1. They're in the semi finals. By chance, over the four rounds of this tournament, both men have got exactly the same average percentage of first serves in at 56%. But uh, even if it's rather more successful with points one on first serve, but those that have gone in, he's won 92% of the time, compared with Kefalnikov, who's only won 76% of the time on first serve. It's still going with serve, but he has new balls. This is where it's very useful to be two-handed because you just get that added little bit of control with the two hands. Fifteen all. Thirty fifteen. Forty fifteen. So difficult to play against Goran because you never know what he's going to do with the serve. Yes, exactly.